Good day, good day. It is December 1st. It's a whopping minus 10 degrees Celsius outside. In Fahrenheit, that would be 14 degrees to Fahrenheit. Let me show you. Let me show you what it looks like outside right now. This. Yeah. So yeah. We have this for the next four, five months. Seriously. Can't remember if I showed you or not, but I have the bus spray foamed. I'm pretty certain I did. Did show you that is. Also, just a couple of weeks ago, I put this rigid insulation where the windows are and I covered it up with plastic. This way when I run that beautiful heater in the back, it won't fog up the windows. Like this window. Seriously, it is that bad. That's why propane heat is not a good thing in small enclosed areas like this. So anyway, today, first thing on the agenda, clean up this pigsty a little bit. I got a bunch of deliveries in. Over here, that's a toilet. That's a 35,000 BTU furnace. Got a lot of electrical over there. Can't remember if I mentioned that or not. It's been a while, what can I say? More wind, not windows, but more lights over there. Sorted out my wiring. So now I only have a few cables going across for the uh, backup lights and stuff like that. But I still have a lot of, I still have a lot more work to do there. But the first thing I'm going to do is set, up, is set up that bad boy. Now, now as you enter the bus, right where that lunch pail is, right here, that's going to be a small little cabinet area. Oh, who am I kidding? That's where my cats are going to have their litter box. It, and then right beside that, right where that window is, well about half that window, there's going to be a bench facing this way like this. Then here is going to be another cabinet, or cupboard, sorry cupboard is what I meant. And right there that's where the stove is going. And that's where I'm also going to put the furnace. You can still, you can sort of see where I punched out a couple of holes for the exhaust and the intake. Over here will be the sink, a cupboard, bedroom area. If I ever get around to it, I'll show you the plans. So let me just clean this pigsty up a little bit, then we'll get working on that thing. Hopefully it won't take too long to clean up, but you can never know. I could get lazy. I do get lazy. See you in a bit. Okay, I know I said I was going to work on the furnace as the first thing, but I changed my mind. At the back of the bus here, this section over here is going to be my bedroom. Right over here is going to be my shower. So I actually want to remove, you can't see what I'm pointing at. I actually want to remove this chunk of plywood here because over here where my bed is going to be I want to put another subfloor raise it up and in look at me thank you I want to raise up that section with another 2x2 two two subfloor so this way Hopefully it doesn't black out on me again. Because over here, that's where my bed is going to be. That's where I'm going to have at least 100 gallons of water. So I'm going to need water lines running from the water tank to an area you can't see because I'm pointing behind me. But this, the kitchen sink is behind me. The bathroom sink is over here. The shower is over here. So I need water lines 
to run throughout the bus. The easiest way to do that is to put an inch and a half floor right under, the, right where the bed is going to be. It won't be seen, it won't be noticed, I hope, but that's just the plan anyway. So I'm going to set you up so, you can, so I can cut out this plywood on the floor. If you remember how much fun I had putting it down, using glue and screws and all that other fun stuff, I got the odd feeling I'm swearing trying to get this up. I'll set you up and uh, we'll get going on it. Okay, I'm not certain if you can see the lines here, but I have a line from here going to the wall, then again from here going to the joint over there. Wearing my hard hat with the earmuffs because I'm going to be using a skill saw and also a sawzall or reciprocating saw, whichever you prefer. So, let's get started. Yeah, there'll be cursing involved. The plywood goes to just underneath this framing here. And I have the 2x2 two two right here, so that means this is all glued down. I just had to use glue, didn't I? Yeah, I'm going to need a crowbar or something. I'll get those screws out, hopefully we'll be able to slide out, but if I'm not mistaken I have a 2x2 right here and that's going to be screwed down as well. This I'll just cut with the sawzall right here. Yay! Yes, I did go over kill with the glue, that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure it stayed in place so I get what I deserve. get a pry bar and I'll be right back and with luck will come up easy. Yeah, right. So I got a chisel, a standard wood chisel, and a cold chisel. Let's see how this works.
I need an actual crowbar, something to pry a lot. Or a hammer. Oh no! There was a joint right here with screws. I'm lifting up the entire stud. Crap, crap, crap. That's why I was having so much trouble. Since you already watched me cut lumber before, it's nothing too exciting or special, so I just pre-cut everything and got it ready to go. Here, 
here. Let me just zoom out here. That's where the shower is going to be. The water tank is going to be sitting on top of here. So I'm going to have water lines going along in the back of the wall for the shower. Not a problem. But to get the water lines... Oh, I'm getting you really dizzy, aren't I? Let's get this this way. Okay, so the shower is over here. The water tank is going to be over here underneath the bed. For the water lines to go to the shower and the bathroom sink over here, it's not a problem. I'll have a, I'll have a wall there. And that works fine. But for the kitchen sink, which is behind me here, I'm going to run some water lines in this cavity here behind Oh, let me get you off that thing. So the shower is here. I'm going to have the water lines coming across here. There's going to be a cabinet here. This is where the fridge is going to be. That's where the sink is going to be. So with this little cavity here, I can run as many water lines as I want. It's only going to be two, cold and hot. And it would be no problems getting across. And with this being here, like this, the bed is going to be, this, this the stud here is probably going to have to move out a couple of inches. I'll trim back those end, uh, end studs here, because the bed is not going to be all the way flush to the shower. It's going to be back several inches, I just haven't decided, I just haven't figured out, I just haven't figured out where that will be. So I just, I just did this temporarily so I can get some shelving in place so I can get that garbage over here out of my way so I can work in the front area. So yeah, just shower, hot water, not hot water tank, but 100 gallon tank, a couple of lines going across the wall for the shower and the bathroom sink, then some then that little cavity just so I can get some water lines over here. And again, like it's going to be the bedroom area. It's not like I'm going to have to stand up in this area that much, so. That's that. So, maybe I'll have enough time to work on the furnace today. Ran into another snag with the bus. My brother wanted me to move the bus forward so when he uses his snow plow to clean his yard, it's a rather large yard, he could be, he'd be able to drive behind the bus for a path that he makes. I don't understand, whatever. He just wanted me to move it forward. I said, sir, I said, sure, no problem. I went to start the bus, it wouldn't turn over. I turned the key, it makes noise like it wants to start, but it won't start. It's not that cold out, it's probably about minus five Celsius. So that's 23 Fahrenheit. And yeah, it's just, I don't know what the problem is. I'm not sure if the block heater isn't working. I have it plugged in, I think. And when he gets back, I have to see if he has a multimeter I can check, so I can test it. I also have the batteries on a charger right now. I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of hours. Hopefully that'll charge it up enough. But I have no idea what the problem is. It was working fine before, now it's not. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that one out. But for now, I'll work on the furnace and wait till he gets back. Then I can test the uh, lock heater, test the battery, see if I can crank this thing over. It's been about a month since it was last started, so maybe the battery might be a little too dead to crank it over. I don't know. Well, there's actually two batteries for this thing. But, yeah. I'll set you up for the furnace over here and uh, we'll continue working on that. See you in a bit.